In this video, I'll be doing a review of Fedora 18, which is codenamed Spherical Cow. I love the weird names they come up with. Anyway, I finally got round to looking at an RPM based distro, and the reason I've not done it before was that I just didn't really know enough about the system, and I thought it was going to be so complicated, and I just really put it off. But in fact, looking at it now, it's no more difficult than Debian. Just use what yum instead of apt-get, and there's just a few other little changes here and there where some of the config files are stored in different places. But yeah, really wasn't that difficult. But I couldn't really go and recommend it to a first-time Linux user. Now, if you're a first-time Linux user, you probably want to go with something more like Ubuntu or one of the derivatives. But yeah, if you've used Ubuntu or one of those easier to use systems and got bored of it now and want to see what Linux is like, um, yeah, Fedora 18 is absolutely fine for that. As you've just seen there, it booting up and it boots up at a reasonable pace in VirtualBox. Now I know VirtualBox can distort the view of the system, but no, the resources I've given it are uh, plenty enough that it should work alright, and as I'm saying that, it has a little glitch here. Now I know this is a VirtualBox glitch here, because if I just go and resize that screen, works fine. <laughs> yeah, that glitch I know is VirtualBox, I'm not going to criticise the distro for that. Now, when I was using Fedora 18, I found my biggest issues were within the actual use of GNOME, and it's GNOME 3.6 here. I'll give you an example. One of the things I like to do when I'm viewing a system is to try out the file manager, and I get a load of files off my NAS, so I'll get an MP3 album, a couple of videos, an AVI file and MKV files, and see how well they play and also test the responsiveness of what well, known the system, the file manager, and basically see how well it is to use there. However, Nautilus 3.6, I couldn't go and do it. I just couldn't find the connect to server button. That's one of these weird setups they've got now with it. That they've taken some of the options away, and that is one of them to go. That but I was looking around on the internet thinking, oh, there must be an answer somewhere. Someone must have asked this question. And sure enough, found a post on Fedora 18, the beta release. And they said, yes, just go and install the package. Yep, yum, install, Nautilus, connect to server. I'll go and do that then. Can't find package. Okay, it must be different now in the final release. And yes, I went and used yum. And not only used yum, the uh, also used the GUI package manager. Actually, that was all quite easy. But yeah, what wasn't easy though was trying to find out how to connect to, to, connect to server in Nautilus. So in the end I had to make a choice, so if I research it for another couple of hours and get nowhere, or as it's well after 7 o'clock now, I want my dinner, I'm hungry, and I want to go and watch a movie afterwards. So sorry, that was my decision in the end, to leave it off. I did go and install the restricted extras and Adobe Flash, well, that was a bit of a learning stage as well. <laughs> but hey, I've got them done. Now with Nautilus 3.6 it is all a bit of a different way of working now with all these activity windows and well in fact one thing I do find annoying though is there's no minimize button. <sighs> Why leave that off? I know you want people to work that way. And I know you don't have to just drag and drop them there, you can open them in open the applications in different ways and you know, I can open Firefox like that. And just go to oh right click move to workspace down. There we are. It'll be in that win workspace now for activity window. What is the correct term for them? Whatever the desktops. It's got multiple desktops and that's the use of them. So let's go and take a look more of a look at the system. So I go down to the applications and just use these filters on here. That's about the usual assortment of accessories you'd expect to see. All right, nothing under education. Under games, you've got a couple of the card games. Graphics, got Document Viewer, Image Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Shotwell Photo Manager, and Simple Scan. Under Internet, got Boxes allows you to log on to other systems remotely. Your Empathy Instant Messenger, Firefox Web Browser, Remote Desktop Viewer, and Transmission for downloading torrent files. Let's go and open up Boxes. So creating a box will allow you to use another operating system directly from your existing login. That sounds a good feature for business users there. So let's just go and close that. Just drag it down from the top and get the close button. Under Office, so you've got Evolution and LibreOffice. That's not the full suite of LibreOffice. 
the sound and video, so we've got Brazio Disc Burner, Cheese Webcam Viewer, Rhythm Box, and Video, a video player. Under System Tools, Ooh, there's a few things here. I'm going to open up System Monitor and we'll take a look at the, the software downloader as well. You've got this automatic resizing for half the desktop if you move the application into a corner of the screen. You can only resize applications side by side, you can't resize them well into four applications at once. Looking at resource usage there, 460 meg of RAM in use. So the software downloader is pretty simple, so oh, what could we have, what could we have, Chromium, let's try that, Chromium web browser not there, <laughs> you got the Chromium game, okay, I know one that was there, we've got Inkscape, so I'll go and in install Inkscape, just apply changes, ask for your admin password, Really, it is simple as that to install packages via the GUI method. Just leave that going for a bit longer because I think we're near enough through the uh, application list. So where do I get to? Right, system tools is done. Universal access, it's just the Orca screen reader. And other, Adobe Flash Player and Yum Extender I installed. There's a few other configuration applications here. One I did like was the firewall. There's some good settings in here. Looks a bit more useful than the Ubuntu uncomplicated firewall. There you are, you see uh, Inkscape is installed, so I can go and run it. So there it is. Installed easily enough. Here's what I thought of Fedora 18. So easy to use. Uh, well, not really. Um, it's more of a step up from Ubuntu, so I certainly couldn't recommend this for a first time Linux user. I recommend you practice on an easier to use system first. So ease of installation, it was fairly good, it has a graphical installer on there, but there's a couple of uh, technical questions that prevented me from giving it a 5 out of 5 for that point. The so styling, well it's just a basic GNOME 3.6 theme there, with no additional enhancements to it. A boot up speed, oh, it was close for me to giving that four, 4 stars, but it took just over 10 seconds there in VirtualBox. So a real system for mine that would have taken around 15 seconds to boot up. So. Responsiveness it was fairly good, but I've seen distros be slightly quicker than Fedora 18. Number of bugs, there's a minor bug in one application there, but I've only knocked that off half a point for that one. Selection of pre installed applications, it's pretty good, but there was no codex pre installed, so you would have had to have done some work. It's not an out of the box system. Number of applications available, I did find a repository somewhat lacking of applications, so definitely the Codex were one of them. They're very much on this uh, free open source style that uh, Debian have, that's actually a real pain when you just want the best application for the job. You have to go and do a bit more work to get those. <laughs> Alright, uh, the 32 and 64 bit versions, yeah, it has both of them. So good points, so it's a good system to progress on to after using, say, the easier systems like Ubuntu or Mint. But the bad points, uh, GNOME 3.6 has a lot of weird changes that make for a difficult to use system. <laughs> I've pointed out there at least there are alternative desktop environments available. But overall I've given this distribution 78%. Uh, so thanks for watching, see you later.